Hey, welcome to Monday Morning Prayer. However, I'm recording this on Sunday night. I'm hoping to get away Monday, at least for part of the day. So I'm hoping this works and you're actually watching this Monday morning. Um, and I'm just hoping it works. Anyway, I want to do this video in response to the question that Estella asked on Friday when we were talking about difficult relationships. And... Um, she asked about whether or not it's ever right to walk away, and I said, yes, it is, but that's a difficult question, and I want to actually take the time to answer that and address that in this uh, prayer session. Now, this is obviously a very complicated question. It's not easy. Jesus talked about it in Matthew chapter 18, verses 15 to 17, so obviously in those verses when you read them, Jesus himself is saying that there are times that you do walk away from relationships. Uh, but, you know, obviously it's complicated because, first of all, we're talking about people. When we're talking about ending something, we're not talking about, you know, just giving up pizza. You know, we're talking about people. And human beings aren't machines. You know, we are very complicated. Plus, because, you know, we're followers of Jesus, obviously our goal is always, you know, redemption of relationships and reconciliation, a redemption for that person. So we always want to hold out that hope. And... Uh, you know, one of the other issues, of course, is that um, we got our own baggage that we're dealing with. So we have to be aware of the fact that we're dealing with our own stuff, and this is not just about another person. Nevertheless, I kind of want to walk you through how to know whether or not it's right to end the relationship. And I'm indebted to a guy named Henry Cloud. Um, I think he wrote a book. Uh, I know he wrote a book. I can't remember the name. I think it's called Necessary Endings. And I read that some time ago and found it helping. And I'm also indebted to just the fact that I've done a couple messages on Matthew chapter 18 verses 15 to 17. So I got those out and was perusing them this afternoon in preparation for this. And I jotted down a couple notes. So um, let me talk about how to know, how to recognize whether or not it's right to walk away. So let's assume that you're in a relationship with a person and it you know, may be a marriage relationship, boyfriend, girlfriend, um, family relationship, or even a relationship with neighbors or work or whatever it is. But obviously the reason you ask a question, is it right to walk away to end this relationship is because there's some problem that's going on. Obviously we don't think about any relationships, you know, when everything is going well. So let's just assume that there's a problem in the relationship. So step number one, uh, you don't end a relationship with a person who is willing to work on the problem. So let's say that you have a conversation with a, with a person and immediately they take responsibility for the problem. You're able to talk about the problem and there's actually progress. It works. That person responds with an apology, and, there, and there's some definite effort to make a change. Now, I'm not saying that it's going to be easy or that it's going to be fast, but you can tell. I think we're all smart enough to know. We're able to identify when a person is really working on the particular problem, and you see progress. And, and maybe you're even part of it. You're recognizing that there's some things that you have to change as well. So, um, you know, you'll... Step number one is when you talk about a problem, a person recognizes it and says, yes, there's an apology, there's effort, and you see some change. And very often when this happens, you'll, you'll notice that over time your relationship actually grows and it gets stronger. It gets better uh, because you've been able to be honest and deal with it. So that's step one, recognizing that there's legitimate effort to deal with the problem. Now, step number two, here's where it gets more complicated. You sit down with a person and you start talking about a problem. And even if that person recognizes it and says, oh yeah, I'm really sorry. What you start to realize is that the problem never really gets addressed. And what happens is you find that over a period of time, you keep talking about the same problem over and over and over, and it never really goes away. It might change for a day or for a week, but it never goes away. And this is different from the person who, when you talk about the problem, they address it, even if it's hard and if it takes time. In this case, 
nothing changes, nothing ever happens. And we all know that eventually what happens when you're dealing with this situation is eventually you start to think that addressing the problem becomes nagging. And nobody wants to be nagged. I don't and you don't. And we don't like nagging either. Not only do we not want to be in a receiving end, but we don't want to do the nagging. So you start to recognize, you know what, this is nagging. It's I, I keep bringing it up over and over and over. And so what happens is when you bring up a, when you bring up a problem and you start nagging, you start to get some of the same um, responses. Sometimes you'll get a person who will say, yeah, I'm really sorry, but, and there's always a but as if they're saying, um, they're really not taking responsibility. They're saying, yes, but. And when you start to hear the buts, then you know that the, pro- the person really isn't dealing with the problem. Or sometimes a person will attack you. They get very defensive and they start saying things like, yeah, well, why is this my fault? Um, and you know immediately that even if you're willing to confess that you're part of the problem, you know that they're not dealing with it. They're shifting the responsibility to you. Um, sometimes people will simply make excuses. And they'll say, well, you know, yeah, I know, um, but you don't really understand why I am this way, or et cetera. And you start to hear excuses for their behavior. Um, sometimes people will actually minimize it. And they're trying to make it humorous. People who are really good with humor will like, <laughs> you know, yeah, I can't believe this is an issue for you. You know, it doesn't seem to bother anybody else. So they'll tend to minimize the problem. Sometimes people respond not by attacking you, but by actually attacking themselves. They'll respond by saying, I know, I'm such a loser. This is the way I've always been. And really what they're doing is they're creating a situation where you feel sorry for that person. And so you're not going to put any more burdens on them. And they're really, what they're doing is they're making, they're putting the problem on your shoulders by by, rec- by helping, by trying to make you feel guilty. So when you start to see those things, you know, you start to see excuses or minimizing or attacking you, whatever, then you know that this person is not dealing with the problem um, and it's never gonna go away. And so what has to happen in, in, your, in this situation is you have to shift your behavior, you have to shift what you're doing And rather than addressing the problem, you now have to start talking about the consequences. And what I mean by that is you have to start being, you have to start with a willingness to say to that person, to sit down and have a conversation and say, you know, we've talked about this before. We've had this conversation over and over and over for the last umpteen years. And and you will say something like, um, you don't want to hear it anymore. And and I'm really tired of talking about the problem. So I'm not going to talk about the problem anymore. Instead, uh, what I'm going to do is there are going to be some consequences. And so now the conversation becomes about the consequences and not the problem. So, for example, imagine that you're dealing with somebody who's chronically late all the time. And I don't mean just two or three minutes late, but everything that happens, you know, the person's not home in time, um, always missing dinners, you're, you're late for events, you always have friends that are waiting so, and you've really gotten tired of this kind of problem. So what you might say is something like, you know, hey, we've addressed this. This has been an issue at work, or this has been an issue in our home for the last five years. I'm tired of talking about it. You're tired of hearing about it. So this is what you need to know. The next time you're late, I'm leaving. Um, I'm not going to wait for you. I'm hopping in the car and you can meet me there when you arrive. And everybody will know that the lateness is as a result of your chronic lateness and not mine. Um, And you address it by saying, this is the consequence for this behavior. And essentially what you're doing is you're taking the consequences off your shoulders. You still have some obviously, but you're taking the consequences off your shoulders and you're placing the consequences where they belong. Or maybe, maybe the issue is something like, Uh, explosive anger, that there are these episodes of just this person explodes, maybe even borderline violent, and the kids are cowering, or, you know, other employees are aware of it, or you can't have a conversation without this person just violently getting angry. So you might be forced to say a situation, something like, you know, have a conversation like this, where you say, um, you know, we've had this conversation, we've talked about it, and once again, you're saying, I don't want to hear it anymore, and you don't want to hear it anymore. It's become nagging. So you need to know this. Uh, This is your warning. The next time that you explode with anger, 
and you come home and we have one of these violent, you know, angry kind of episodes. I don't mean violent hitting. That's another issue. But we have one of these episodes of explosive anger. Um, you need to know you're not going to get a warning. I'm not going to stand there and try to argue with you or try to calm you down. But I have made um, I've made arrangements that when it happens, I will just walk out the door. I'll get the kids or whatever the situation is, and I'm just going to walk out the door and I'm going to go over and stay with my mom or I'm going to stay with a friend or, you know, whatever it is. I'm going to stay somewhere, a hotel if it has to be, um, for several days. And that's going to be the consequence. And this is your warning. When it happens, you need to know I'm not going to stand here and try to calm everything down. When it happens, I immediately am walking out the door. And there, there uh, needs to be those consequences. Now, you obviously have to be willing to live with those consequences. You might have to enlist some friends ahead of time. Um, you know, obviously talk to somebody. But whatever it is, the conversation is no longer about the problem. The conversation is now about the consequence. And the goal in this is obviously you're not yet ending a relationship. What you're hoping to do is actually end the pattern or end the problem. And you're doing that. You're hoping to end the pattern and the problem. You're doing that by making sure that that person is experiencing the consequences for his or her behavior. This is really, it's biblical. Um, you know, this falls under the category of from Galatians where Paul talked about how you reap what you sow. That's by God's design. God designed the world so that there are consequences for our behavior. Now, obviously, we talked about this once before. Sometimes parents or other people, we shortchange uh, individuals. I'm not sure if that's the right expression. But, um, you know, we, we do an end around and we don't allow a person to experience the consequences from their behavior. And in some ways, we're not allowing uh, God to do his work in a person. But that's biblical. So you shift from the problem to the consequence, and you want that person to experience the consequences of behavior. It's, you know, again, by God's design, you reap what you sow. Now, there are times when even that does not work, when um, you start to recognize that nothing is changing in this relationship. And again, whatever kind of a relationship it is, and you start to recognize that uh, perhaps this relationship is going to end. And that ending may be, you know, have all kinds of different flavors depending on the kind of relationship you're in. I mean, at times you might be recognizing, you might just be asking, can I, can I live with this circumstance? You know, can I stay in this friendship, this marriage? Can I stay here at this place of work if this is the way it's going to be? But when you decide that you can't, um, and again, Math Jesus deals with this in, in that section in Matthew. Even Jesus acknowledges that there are times when there has to be distance uh, in, in a relationship, and you, you might have to end a relationship. Um, and so you start to recognize that, you know what, this is not changing. He has experienced the consequences, and nothing is working, you know, where she just keeps doing the same thing. So when you get to that point, uh, you, you may want to sit down with a person, and actually probably you've done that the whole way through this. You've had some conversations with, you know, a counselor, pastor, friends, uh, etc. But you might get to a place where you're saying, I actually think that this is going nowhere and it's time to end. So let me give you seven questions to ask. Um, and, you know, obviously you can go back and re rewind and write these questions down. But seven questions to ask to kind of process are we now at an end? Um, question number one, is, th is that person that you're dealing with, is he or she willing to be involved in some kind of a proven process of change? So, you know, you're now saying nothing is working. Um, it, the behavior still hasn't changed. And, you know, I'm, I'm ready to move on. And the person is saying, oh, yeah, I want to change. I, I want to solve this relationship. So ask yourself, number one, is he or she willing to involve him or herself, in a proven process of change. Does that mean is he going to go to an AA meeting? Um, is he is she willing to get some counseling? Is uh, is he willing to sit down with a financial advisor? Whatever, some kind of process. Are they willing to do that? Number two, 
uh, are there, is that person putting any new structures in his or her life? Uh, is he willing to meet with a group of guys for a Bible study, willing to talk to the pastor, willing to um, maybe, you know, is he just willing to get up on time in the morning, go for a walk with you? Um, is he taking classes, reading a book, watching some online uh, sessions about, you know, financial wisdom or anger management or whatever? Is he putting any new structures in his life? Number three, um, is he willing to put some systems in place to kind of monitor behavior? So, I mean, there's all kinds of stuff out there. You know, is he willing to put uh, like some app on his phone that will record all the places that he's visited? So, you know, you know, is, is he or she still going to that, you know, you know, porn or whatever it is, whatever they're doing? Um, and, uh, is he or she willing to kind of do a weekly check-in with you or, or somebody? So there are systems in place to kind of monitor, uh, behavior is, uh, number four, is he willing to learn some new skills? Now, you know, there's some obvious overlap. I don't mean with these seven that you, you know, there's yes to all of them. What you're looking for is, are there yes to any of these? Uh, so number four, is he willing to learn some new skills? Uh, can he attend uh, some class and actually work on this? And maybe the new skill is just having a conversation with you without exploding in anger. Um, whatever. Are there, are there some new skills that he's willing to do? Number five, is the motivation coming from her or from you? If you're the one that has to constantly be saying, Hey, did you watch the session this week? You know, did you read the Bible? Did you talk to the pastor? If you are the one who has to constantly be saying, are you doing it? Then the motivation is coming from you and not from that person. Um, number six, is he telling the truth? Um, you know, does she get caught in lies? And again, you know, that's just a sign of his or her level of motivation and truthfulness in this. And number seven, over a period of time, can you point to any success? Do you really see effort and change? So those seven questions, when you get to the place where you're saying, I just don't think this has a future, I don't think it's going anywhere, do some very honest um, deliberation over those seven questions. And if when you know when you answer those seven questions, you get to the point where you say, um, there's just no indication that this relationship is going anywhere. And again, don't do this on your own. Get, uh, get some good conversation from other Christians, other competent people that you trust. Um, when you get to the place where you're saying, this just isn't going anywhere, then it's time to say, um, this, this relationship is, is going to end. And it's going to be difficult and it's going to be painful but, uh, you know, even again, Jesus acknowledges in Matthew 18, chapter, 15, or chapter 18, 15 to 17, that there comes a time when you recognize that you need to have some distance. Uh, there need to be boundaries, whatever you want to call them. And the relationship has to come to an end. And it's obviously that you get there with a lot of prayer and, and it's painful, but you get there. Then obviously the third category, um, that's the second one. That's the one where you're dealing with somebody who you really want it to work. But the third category, I just think we have to admit that there are evil people in the world. I haven't met many of them, but in my time as a pastor, I've met a handful of people, a small handful of people, uh, just because I'm a pastor, I've met them in churches. And these are people who, over time, I started to recognize these are hurtful people. And often, you know, that whole wolf in sheep's clothing. It really is true. Um, sometimes in churches, there are people who initially have the, the, the skies of being good people, but you start to recognize that they're harmful. These are people, evil people are people who really are out to hurt you. They're out to be divisive. When you see it in church, for example, you start to recognize, man, our church is falling apart. And, and this is kind of what I've lived through. 
And when you start to try to pick up the pieces, you started to notice that that name keeps surfacing. That person is involved in all of these things that are falling apart. And they may be actually causing people to take sides and they may enlist some people to their side. But you start to recognize that their goal is to damage or to hurt you. There are people like that out there. There are people whose goal is to hurt you, to ruin you, make you lose a job, stab you in the back, whatever, to do harm. When you run into a person like that, uh, you really need to keep your distance. And if you're in a relationship with a person who's out to hurt you, then then that relationship really needs to end. I think, you know, obviously, and this is old news, but when you're in a relationship with a person who's abusive or hurting you in any way, that relationship needs to end. If you need to get the police involved or an attorney or whoever it is, then do so. Um, it's right to do so. Uh, there are those situations where there are... Um, where there are evil people out to hurt you. So I hope that helps to process this. Now, granted, what, it's taken me 20 minutes, and I've covered in 20 minutes a really, really important issue um, for us sometimes, this question of, you know, when to end a relationship. That's just kind of surface-level advice, but I hope it helps. And um, obviously, it may just be a way for you to look through those things, those three steps you know, can you talk about the problem and it works? When it doesn't, start talking about the consequences so that that person experienced the consequences. And when that doesn't help, then you get to the place to say, I think I need to evaluate whether or not this relationship needs to end. Then obviously the third step is when you're dealing with um, evil people who are hurtful and those relationships need to end and you need to have some protection. So if that at least gets you thinking and started kind of processing, like, how do I know? Um, then, you know, hopefully that's, that's kind of what you're after. And maybe it'll start a conversation with you and a counselor or a pastor or somebody that you can help process with this. So let me pray uh, for your day, although, you know, I'm praying almost uh, 12 hours early for when you're going to see this. But uh, let me pray and let's get, uh, you guys can get on with your day. And I'll enjoy whatever it is that I'm doing on a Monday. God, thank you for your faithfulness to us. God, we recognize that our relationships with people uh, really are, sometimes are extraordinarily difficult. Even when we're talking about people that we love to the ends of the earth, we still sometimes find ourselves in situations that are hard and we've we've experienced some damage and hurt in our relationships. God, especially right now, I, I keep hearing from people how difficult some of our relationships are right now just because of the circumstances we're in. So God, I pray that you'd be at work reconciling our relationships, bringing redemption to human beings and to the relationships that we're in. God, I pray that you'll help us to, to find a way to do our very best in relationships. But at the same time, God, I think, you know, Jesus even recognized you have this wisdom from Jesus in Matthew 18 about the fact that sometimes it really is necessary to, to end relationships. God, I pray that you'll protect us from harmful relationships, from people who are out to do damage and hurt us, not only individually, but to hurt our families, hurt our businesses, to hurt our churches. I pray, God, that you'll protect us from that and um, uh, protect us from harm. God, thank you for your goodness to us. Thank you so much for your faithfulness. And I pray, God, that you'll go with us through this day. And I pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. Well, thanks all, um, and have a great day.